go, go, go. Let's get it. I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic, so I cannot turn it on or off. Okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick. I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Your bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most. I tell her no bitch, so extra. And my gun up on me, but I run up on me. Niggas, they wanna fight, they some bust. When Naruto was at the age of seven, he ran from the village. He obviously just couldn't take it anymore. Everyone hated him there, so why would he stay? Naruto makes it to a river and jumps from stone to stone, but then slips and is swept down by the rushing water down the waterfall. This is the moment where he would die. And for the sake of this story, we're going to say Karamba doesn't try to intervene because he knows this is his chance to escape this human's body. Naruto's eyes then remain closed, but he envisions an area that reminds him of the stars in the night sky. Hello there, Naruto. What? Who's speaking to me? And where am I? I am known as the Great Sage, and you? You are dead as of now. What? I really died from that fall? Well, I did hit my head pretty hard, and I was pretty high up. Damn, this sucked. I just gained freedom and I died. What now, Great Sage? You have two options. Continue your life in this world, or go to another. Which one would you like to choose? I think I'll stay in this world, with my body. Sorry, but your own body won't be the same anymore when you wake up. What do you mean? The Great Sage remains silent and Naruto wakes up, but for some reason he can't see at all. Great Sage, where did my vision go? And why does my body feel like this? Will you activate Chakra Sense? Chakra Sense? Will it allow me to see? Yes. Then do it. The world around Naruto then becomes visible once again, and he walks back over to the river to see that his body was now in the shape of an orb. Great Sage, can I have my original form? No. What do you mean, no? Your last form has been lost, but you can replicate it with the transformation skill. Alright, let's do that then. This is when Naruto transforms back into his kid-like body. That's much better. You said that I'm using the transformation skill, but do I have any more cool skills like that? You also now have access to many transformations and many skills. You also have the skills of the tail beast that you have consumed. What tail beast? The nine tails resides inside of your body. Therefore, you can utilize its chakra and its abilities as your own skills. You also have access to its transformations. I see. Naruto then goes over to drink some of the water from the river, but the great sage tells him that food and water is no longer needed. Naruto then gets sad at the realization that he doesn't need to eat ramen anymore. He would begin to explore the forest that he was in and learn more and more about the skills that are now his own. As he was roaming around, he came across a small town. Well, it's better than sleeping outside or in a cave. Naruto decides to take refuge here in this abandoned town. He walks around seeing the destroyed buildings, as this is when someone jumps out at him. Don't go any further. Naruto grabs the kid by his wrist to see that he was even younger than him. Great Sage, what's wrong with this kid? Why does he look like this? He seems to be suffering from starvation and dehydration. Naruto then asked him, Are there others like you here? The kid shakes his head no, but Naruto was able to tell that he was lying. He used his chakra sense to figure out how many of them that there were. There were a total of about 15. Naruto then went back out into the forest to get them all some food. He kills a large boar and catches some fish and stores it inside himself. He walks back to see that no one was even there, not even the boy from before. Naruto decides to still cook, sensing their chakra 
was nearby. He lays out wood and makes a table, earning new skills after creating a fire. He then gains unique skill, fire creation. The great sage then explains how this unique skill can be used as long as the requirements are met. Naruto then begins to cook the food and earns even more skills that go along with his movements. The children would smell the food and come out asking Naruto if they could have some. Naruto then tells them to go ahead and dig in, and the kids begin to eat the food that was prepared. Naruto would look around and finds the kid who seems to be the oldest, which was the one from before. What happened here? The kid puts his head down and closes his fist. Our home was attacked by Rogue Shinobi, who killed our parents and took everything that we had. We were left with no food, no water. I'm the oldest, so I have to try and go scavenge every once in a while, but the younger kids get worried that I won't come back, so I'm usually forced to stay here and send one of them out, but they barely return. Thanks for the food and everything, but you can leave. I don't want them getting attached to someone who's going to betray us. Naruto then puts his hand on the boy's head. Don't worry too much about that. I've been betrayed before as well. So from here on out, I'm going to be helping you guys. You don't have anywhere to sleep, right? The boy nodded, and Naruto walked off telling him to enjoy the meal as it's all theirs. Once the food was gone, the kids headed to a building where they all slept in. It was dirty sheets, rats were on the ground, and it was just completely unsanitary. The night goes by fast, and when they woke up, they saw that many of the buildings had been rebuilt. And Naruto was sitting down, laying in front of one of the doors of one of the rebuilt buildings. The kids walk over, seeing that he was covered in dirt and small scratches. Naruto was awoken by the same kid with dark hair. Did you really make all of this yourself? I told you from now on I'd be helping you guys out. Go ahead. Make yourselves at home. The kids would then walk in the large building seeing multiple doors which all led to separate rooms where each of them could sleep in. They would all thank Naruto, but he tells them that there's much more than that. There's much more that needs to be done to improve their town. Great Sage, are there any barrier seals that I can learn or skills? Judging from the analyzation of your previous seal that you harbored, that resided the nine tails. This seal can be modified into a barrier seal that is much stronger. Naruto begins to study on how to create this type of seal on his own. During his studying, someone would actually come to visit him. It was the dark haired boy. You're strange. You show up out of nowhere and help us for no reason. Why is it you waste your time here when you could have a great life somewhere else? Naruto gets up before he could continue and hugs the boy, noticing that he was crying. It's because I see myself within all of you. But you guys have way more than me. You have each other. Naruto then sits back down, asking the boy for his name. He would also give his own. What's your name? I can't remember my own. Is that so? How about I give you a new name? The boy then looks towards Naruto. Now, for some reason having hope in his eyes, being somewhat excited about what Naruto would say next. How does Ryo sound? The kid smiles and asks Naruto, about the other kids and their names. But Ryo would shake his head. Naruto decides to give each one of them a new name, but for some reason, this made him extremely exhausted. Naruto would then go into his room and he falls asleep, knowing that they have food that'll last them until the next day. When Naruto wakes up, he was surrounded by much older teens than him who were radiating strong chakra. Who are you? And where are the kids? 
An older teen with dark hair looks down towards Naruto. Calm down, Naruto. It's us. Rio? Is that really you? Yeah. Can't you tell? Great Sage. Why are they all so much older than me now? By giving them a name, their powers became linked with your own, and their bodies had to develop in order to hold this new power that they have gained. Naruto sits there, and then takes on his kid-like form, walking back out. Ryo goes with him, asking what else they need to do, but Naruto says he needs to finish his studies first. A couple hours go by. As Naruto heads out with Ryo, they would tell the others that they'll be back soon. Naruto and Ryo jump from branch to branch in the forest, and so they reach a river. Naruto then places a seal on the other side and hands a bag of sealing tags to Ryo. Each of them walks around until they would meet on a hill. Once the two, well, the two sides become one, a seal, no, a barrier shoots up into the sky, but then becomes transparent. What was that? It's a seal to keep others out. Wait, is that really possible? Yeah, it is. So let's head back already. They're probably bored out of their minds without us. The two go back to see that the others were trying to learn how to cook on their own. Something then started to burn, and Naruto used the water that he absorbed from the river to put it out. Unique skill. Hydro pump has been unlocked. Great Sage, is it possible for me to transfer skills to those who I have given names since we are connected? Yes, it is. All right, then transfer all the cooking skills that I have to all of them and give fire manipulation or creation only to Ryo. Skills have been transferred. Naruto then looks at Ryo, who creates flames from his palms. Try not to burn everything down while I'm gone. What's that supposed to mean? It means I trust you enough not to burn the whole town I just rebuilt down. Yeah, whatever. Naruto then leaves and begins his journey back to the leaf village. He makes it and walks back in through the gate. No one even notices him because he changes his form to blend in constantly. He then heads to the Uchiha clan compound and then absorbs one of them. After this is when Naruto heads to the Hokage's office, taking the scroll of sealing to then learn from it. After having it analyzed by the great sage, he's found by the Hokage. Just who are you, and what are you doing with that scroll? I'm done with it. Here. Naruto tosses the scroll back to him, and then changes back to his form. Haruzen looks forward to seeing Naruto, but with the Sharingan. That can't be you, Naruto. It is. Whether you believe it or not, Haruzen, it's me. I used to want to be the Hokage of this village. But I think I want to be a Kage of a village that I create myself. Donzo enters the room, seeing this, and instantly has the Anbu try and capture Naruto. Yamato holds him down to the ground, but then he's absorbed by Naruto's predator skill. What did you just do, you monster? Don't you think you're being a little too dramatic? The great sage then goes over a list of skills that Naruto has gained by absorbing that person. Naruto then slams his hand down on the ground, capturing everyone in the room with wood release. See you guys later. Naruto jumps out of the window with a bunch of Jonin shinobi surrounding him. He looks forward at one of them and dashes past them with astonishing speeds. He continues to run, not even stopping, as he gets towards the gate, but he sees the ramen shop. This is when he transforms into a large slime and consumes it into his storage. Naruto would then return to the small town the next day and spits out the ramen shop. 
The man looks at Naruto, but with a smile. As he decides, he will stay here, as it is no different from the Leaf Village. Naruto uses wood release to repair the rest of the buildings, and he makes Ishiraku Ramen a restaurant instead of just a small shop. Naruto then says in order to protect their home, each of them is going to, well, have to train soon. Naruto by now has access to every chakra nature and can use the skills without hand signs. He distributes chakra natures to each of them and begins their training. Within months, each of them have become strong enough to go head to head with the average Chunin. Ryo and Naruto seem to be even stronger than the rest, with the Ryo strong enough to take down a Jonin if he so, well, if he so happened to run into one of them. The town was also much more alive than it was before. Naruto had set up trade operations with other towns because he was able to produce many healing herbs that could not be made by anyone else. One day, someone tries to enter the forest, but the seal stops them. Huh? What the hell is this? Why can't we keep going? I know those kids aren't too far from here. So, that's why you came. The man turned, asking who said that, but he sees a small orange fox. What are you? I'll be doing the questioning from now on. The fox slams its tails to the ground, causing the men in the surrounding area to then be surrounded by a cage of wood that has spikes on it in the inside. Tell me, are you the men who ravaged that town? No, of course not. We're the ones who take care of the children. Isn't that right? The rest of the men would agree, but Naruto activates his Sharingan, putting them under a Genjutsu to reveal their true intentions and the truth. Naruto opens the cage and takes his human-like form. As if I'd let you all continue to live after doing something like that. Naruto creates blades using water and kills each of them before returning back to the town. Now, we won't have to worry about any more of them. A couple years would go by as then someone else tries to make it through the barrier. Naruto and Ryo head there alone and Ryo notices that two people were badly injured. But as he tries to help them, Naruto grabbed his shoulder. Look at their headbands. They're shinobi. Will you still help them? Or will you let the hatred that you have towards them end up causing their death? The choice is yours. Ryo looks down at them, bleeding out, but then he remembers what happens to his family. He sighs, having tears come out of his eyes, and he grits his teeth, asking Naruto to help them. They too would bring them back to the town, where Naruto would end up dragging them to their medical building, and he looks down at all their injuries. First, I need to replace the blood that they've already lost. Once that's done, I'll place the healing tags on their body and wait for them to wake up. Haku and Zabuza woke up, looking around to see Naruto sitting there with Ryo, who was holding the executioner's blade. So, tell us who you are and why you were trying to invade our land. We escaped from another land where we had killed those around us and were forced to rebel. We barely escaped with our lives and are being hunted down as we speak. Please, can we stay here? Ryo was so angered by this and points his blade towards them. Ryo, calm down. I'll handle it from here. The team would sit back down and Naruto looks at them with his Sharingan. The Sharingan? How do you possess that? Are you an Uchiha? You could say that. Naruto steps to them as he gets a closer look. And as he gets closer to them, 
his malice begins to increase more and more. It gets to the point where Zabuza and Haku don't even want to blink while looking at Naruto. If I allow the two of you to stay here, you will do just as I say, and if you even lay a finger on anyone, I will give you a fate worse than death. They agree to the conditions, and Naruto places a yellow ceiling tag on both of them. Zabuza questions this, and why he did so, and Naruto explains, I have blocked the chakra in your body for 10 days, so you won't be able to perform any jutsu. I need to know if I can truly trust you two. Ryo, let's go. Right. The four of them then exit the room and head into the town. Go ahead and enjoy yourselves. Don't worry about paying for anything. Just tell them it's on me. A couple more days go by until Gato and all of his men go searching for Zabuza and Haku. They get to where the seal was and this alerts the town. That can't be good. Naruto has some of them go out and scout, and they come back reporting to Naruto using the chakra communication lines. Lord Naruto, there are about 50 men patrolling the forest surrounding our town. What should we do? First, get back here safely. Me and Ryo will handle it alone. Once they return, Naruto thanks them for their work and then looks back. Ryo, get ready. A couple more minutes go by as we see Naruto and Ryo in all black outfits with swords of their own. Zabuza walks up saying that the two of them can't possibly defeat all of them. Ryo tells them to back off and just be grateful Naruto doesn't give them up to die. This makes them silent and Naruto throws on his black hood and looks to Ryo. We strike when the night completely falls. Naruto and Ryo begin to wait and once they see that it's dark enough, the two of them head out without hesitation. At Gato's camp that was set up around the forest, they saw a large ball of fire coming straight at them. It lands in the middle, but water would land on it creating steam and a deep fog. All Gato can hear is his men screaming out in pain and agony. One by one, each of them is taken down. Naruto dodges a blade before slamming a Rasengan into the others. He flips back, then slamming another to the ground. This is when wood would come from the earth, stabbing ten men who surrounded Naruto. We go over to Ryo, who was utilizing fire and lightning release together. There was more around him than he expected, and he was cut off guard by one of them behind him. However, he was saved by Zabuza and his own blade. Haku then arrives as well, throwing Senbon into the chest of the bandits. Naruto would find Gato, and appears right behind him, using the body flicker technique. He tries to speak but Naruto kills him. He takes off his hood, with his eyes returning to, well, back to blue instead of being red. Naruto would turn his head seeing Ryo talking to Zabuza and Haku. He begins to clean up the blood and the bodies on the ground, and he takes all the supplies that Gato and his men had brought with them back to his town. When they return, everyone was excited to see them. Naruto walks over to Zabuza and Haku, removing their seals. You've given me good enough reason to trust you two. However, from now on your names or your nicknames will be changed. You are no longer the Demon of the Mist. You are Zabuza the Guardian. You will be known as Haku, the Frost Queen. Naruto walks off, going to finish up some more paperwork and research. Another couple weeks go by, and during this time, Naruto has trained a lot more people of this town as they are able to fight. Zabuza and Haku have received a huge boost in strength because of their names changing. Naruto had also created two more barrier seals around the area, one 
was the one right outside the town. Another was the one, well, the original one that was past the river. And there was one even further out than that. Their small town began to look more and more like a village, but Naruto wasn't satisfied yet. He wanted to have more people join his town, but he just couldn't allow anyone, so this would also take time. A couple more months would go by, as this is when someone gets past the first barrier. Naruto gets up from where he was, because he no longer needs to sleep. He throws on his clothing and runs in the direction of where he stints this person. He makes it to the forest and turns around wondering where this mysterious person was. Looking for me? Naruto then feels a hand on his shoulder, but he instantly vanishes and stands on a tree branch looking down at this masked figure. Naruto Uzumaki, I've been watching you for quite some time. You're resourceful. Powerful, cunning, smart, truly, truly the son of the fourth Hokage. You also don't like the world the way it is. So you decided to make your own village, a safe haven for those like yourself. Adorable, yes, but what happens when the corruption of this world makes it to your own village? What will you decide to do then? Who are you? And how do you know so much of me? I am but a relic of the past. A name possibly long forgotten as the victors are the ones who choose to write the history of this world. Not the vanquished. Naruto pulls out a blade. But the masked figure would warp away. Naruto swings the blade behind himself. Jumping back. Looking back to see no blood. Fast reactions, but not fast enough. The masked man appears right before Naruto, but it's dodged, and Naruto actually lands a hit, sending him back. How did you? I've already figured out that trick. It's that eye of yours, but you won't be able to use it now. The red eye then fades into black. What did you just do to me? I've disabled your chakra for 10 days. Now let's get this all sorted out. Naruto activates his own Sharingan, forcing the masked man under a genjutsu, causing him to pass out. When he wakes up, he didn't have his mask on, and he was face to face in a room with Naruto, who would ask how he slept. Enough with the games. Go ahead and kill me already. Kill you. I need information. Tell me about the Sharingan and its true power. Why should I? Death does not scare me at all, so kill me. As I said before, why should I kill you? You could possibly be an ally. And what would your own allies do, knowing you were dead? But I'll provide you with something worse than death. Obito is then put under another genjutsu where he relives the day that he was crushed under a rock and the day that he saw Ren die over and over again. Only an hour had gone by, but he relived these dreadful moments more than 500 times already. The stress from these moments even caused him to pass out. He wakes up once again to see Naruto sitting there playing with his mask. Have you had enough? Tell me, how do these eyes work? Obito still wouldn't crack, and it would take four more days of constant torture until he gave up any information. Naruto would get the information that he wanted, and Obito would ask if he would now be killed. Naruto sighed, saying no once again. Your abilities are too useful, but your mind is gone. Naruto places his hand to the face of Obito. Great Sage, used a unique skill, Eraser. Naruto would gain a smirk, watching Obito fade into another deep sleep. He awakens, looking around to see that he was in a bed. Naruto would walk into the room, staring at him. You look confused, so I'll explain things to you. 
I'm not going to hold the truth, so be prepared. Your name is Obito Uchiha. You are a rogue shinobi planning to attack this world. I've erased your previous memories and given you another chance at life. But if you don't wish to have that, I'll return your old memories. Obito sits there shocked. Why tell me this? Because I believe everyone has a choice in the way that they want to live. Whether that's evil or good. Naruto tells him, do as he pleases in this town. As the two of them would exit and Obito begins to explore this town. The people were so full of life and excitement. Their smiles felt so warm to him. He felt at peace, but he wondered what his old memories would be like. Obito lives here for about two weeks until he comes back to Naruto's office. I've decided. I still want my old memories back. Well, I had a feeling that would be the case. Naruto stands up, using the unique skill, Restore. This restores Obito's memories and body back to the way it was. When he opened his eyes, he looked down at Naruto and grabbed him by the throat. However, the boy turns to slime that consumes his entire body. Naruto, well, his body reforms, and this time, his Sharingan pattern would change to that of the Kamui Eye. Well, this ability will be quite useful. Naruto calls for a meeting that afternoon with Haku, Zabuza, and Ryo. The four of them sit down with a map in the middle of the table. Which direction should we expand our town? Ryo then speaks up. If we continue southeast, we'll eventually make it to a large body of water, and then we'll be able to set up docks and maybe even create boats, as we could also have trades, well, trade routes, with the Mist Village. Zabuza and Haku are, of course, opposed to this, since they are rogue shinobis from that land. Ryo, I don't doubt that this is a good idea. What will they do when they find us here? How about we return your blade back to them as a token of good faith? This way, some sort of alliance can be formed between our two nations. Ryo looks back at Naruto, who would approve of this, and says that since they are under his protection, he won't allow them to be hurt. Zabuza, I will have a replica made of the blade that you now have while we are expanding our land. That way you can do battle the same. Months would go by until the village is almost complete. Naruto begins to design the docks, but it isn't seem, well, it doesn't seem to be working at all. Nothing he tries is working and he wonders why. He then gets an idea. Hey Ryo, I'm leaving you in charge. I'm heading out to get some more people who will be beneficial to our village. Naruto heads out in his fox form to cover more ground. And he goes to the leaf village to see it looking completely different. Some of it seemed to be even in ruins. And the Hokage faces were smashed with only Donzo's face remaining. Naruto walks around, finding a few people. So he asked what was going on. They then explain what happened during the Konoha crush. And how Donzo was now in power as the Kage. Naruto kept walking around until someone would call out to him. It was Shikamaru and Choji. Oh, hey guys. Naruto, what are you doing here? And where have you been? I came looking for some of my old friends and asked if they wanted to leave this dump of a village. Where are the rest of you? Eno is hiding out, relaying information to us. Come on, I've got a better place for us to go. Shikamaru leads Naruto to the resistance group that stands against Donzo and its orders. It was consisted of Shikamaru, Eno, Choji, Neji. Hinata, and Shino. The rest of the Konoha 12 had been brainwashed by Donzo Sharingan 
into following his orders. All right. If this is everyone, let's go. Naruto, where are we going to just come with me? Naruto tells everyone to stand close, and he uses Kamui to transport them to a forest. Naruto, where are we? We're outside of a barrier that I've created. Well, this is just the first one. Neji would activate his Byakugan, looking forward to see the chakra that shot up into the sky. He's right. There's four more of these barriers past this one. Each one seems to be stronger than the last. Naruto smirks and tells them just to walk in behind him. They keep walking through until they get to a barrier that was brighter than anything they've ever seen. Naruto, just what is this? Just keep following me. Let me introduce you all to your new home. The village hidden by light. Raito. As they take a step through, they are amazed to see a large village that seems to keep expanding. Well, what are you all waiting on? Let's head down. Naruto jumps down, with them following close. He walks through the gate, and many run to him saying Lord Naruto. The kids who were there were picked up by Naruto. Lord Naruto, you said you'd show us something cool when you returned. I said that. Well, how about... Well, how about I show you all tonight, during the feast? Their eyes would light up as they run to go tell their parents. My lord, I'm glad you've returned safely. I assume these are the ones you spoke so highly of. Yes, this is them. Ryo, meet Shikamaru, Choji, Ino, Neji, Hinata, and Shino. Guys, meet Ryo. He's my second in command here. Choji then asked if Naruto was the Kage of this village, and he would nod. This shocks all of them because Naruto was only about 13. Yes, Lord Naruto is very young, but don't let it fool you. He's stronger than everyone else here, and our guardians could take down most Joni ninja of this world. They would look back at Naruto to see him talking to another man in a construction-like outfit. Hey Shikamaru, can you come here for a second? This is Tora, my head construction worker. I'd like you to help him with the plans for the docks. Rio, can you then take everyone else to their new positions as well? I have some paperwork I must finish up before this afternoon. Of course, Lord Naruto. I'll meet back with you in your office once I am done. Thank you. Naruto walks off and Ryo looks at the group. He walks over to Ino and Neji and Hinata. All right, you three are going to be set up within the communication and scouting regiment. Choji and Shino, you two come with me as well. They make it to a large building, and they're shown around, and Ryo leaves them. Choji and Shino would question where they were going, but Ryo states Naruto wants them to join the rest of the children who are around their age, who have extreme combat potential. They were then taken to a facility, with 30 other gifted children who were inside. Shino would praise Naruto for his analysis of each of them knowing exactly what positions would benefit them. Oh yes, and speaking of that, Ryo hands each of them scrolls. When opened, they would transform. Shino's would transform to a bow and arrow, with each arrow having a hole in it, which was odd, and there was a special pouch for them to be held. Choji, well, his scroll, turns into a golden chakra pill. What can we do with these? Don't worry. The instructor here will turn you into true soldiers who can defeat armies alone. Ryo returns to Naruto's office and sits down. 
Lord Naruto. They have all reached their positions. Good. Now I'm satisfied. Once Shikamaru and Tora finish up the boats and docks, I'll have a messenger sent to the Mist Village. From there, it shouldn't be too hard to create a bond between our villages. It takes an additional three months in order for the plans for the boats to be finished and for them to be built and also for the message to be sent out. One day, as Naruto sat in his office with Ryo, someone would walk in with a letter handing it to Ryo. As they walk out, Ryo hands it to Naruto. As it was a letter from Mei, the Kage of the Mist Village, Naruto would leave Ryo in charge as he would head to the Mist Village with Zabuza and Haku. They depart from the docks and begin their long journey. This was Naruto's first official trip on a boat, so he was curious of everything that was going on around him. Zabuza looked at Haku and then turned looking down at Naruto. Even with all the power that he still has, he acts like a child. How can you blame him? He's never been on a boat. This is where they watch Naruto leaning over the railing, looking down at something. As the boat continued down, Naruto was still staring down at what he was looking at. They would wonder what it was, but they would also watch Naruto fall into the water below. This is when they try to react going down to try and get Naruto, but the boat had already passed that point and was, well, it kept going. They turn to then see a large serpent rise from the water with Naruto on top of it. This is a lot more fun than I expected it to be. Naruto pets the snake on his head before jumping off of it back to the boat. The serpent rises higher and higher and Naruto smiles looking back at it. You want to do battle here? You're on. Lord Naruto, are you sure that'll be safe? No, but who cares? As long as the boat is intact, that's all that matters, right? The serpent then strikes down towards the boat, but Naruto transforms into the Nine Tails and jumps on it. This snake then slams Naruto deep into the water. The boat continues to go forward with Zabuza and Haku, turning back to see the Nine Tails rise from the water and shoot down a biju bomb towards it. A huge explosion happens, pushing the boat forward because of the waves. This forces the snake back up as well. The fox then stands on the water, but the serpent dives under and heads towards the boat. Oh no you don't. Naruto chases after the snake and jumps on his neck, biting it. The beast roars out and lands on the water. Naruto would then shapeshift, landing back on the boat. He stares back at the snake, smiling as it well, submerges back into the sea. Haku and Zabuza run over to Naruto, who was bleeding from his injuries. Lord Naruto, are you okay? They then see his serious expression and are almost too scared to even help him, but then they see his smile light up. That was amazing. I thought that sea serpent was a myth, but he's strong. I'll definitely do battle with him again. There's no way you plan to fight that thing again. I do. This is when the captain of the ship tells them to all look forward. They would see the mist village and Naruto is amazed at its structure. The boat then flows through the gate and Naruto is greeted by two mist shinobi. They take them to the Mizukage who was shocked to see that Naruto was a child. There is no way this child is the Kage of the Raito village. I am. Well then boy, what business do you have here? And why have you brought these traitors to my land? Mei glares at Naruto but he remains unfazed. I want to set up trade between our two nations. I believe both can benefit from it. Is that so? What can you truly offer that we do not already have? 
Naruto looks at Haku, pulling out his blade and slicing her across her torso. Mei stands up in shock that he would do that, but Naruto tells her to calm down. He pulls out a green tag and places it on her torso. It glows bright and her cells continue to regenerate and she's healed. The Mizukage was at a loss for words. How has this seal developed? I can't tell you that, but I can supply them to you in exchange for metals and money. But before any of that, I'd like to give you something as a token of my gratitude for allowing me to come here. Naruto pulls out a scroll that turns into the executioner's blade. He gives it to her guard and says it does not belong with his village. Mei was still very questionable. You may be smart, but how will your village obtain a higher power and status? Naruto laughs. I'd hate to boast about the Raito village since we are new, but it is the strongest village as of now. All of its shinobi can fight at a jonin level. Hell, they might even be stronger than that. How can you be so sure? Naruto's eyes then turn to that of the Sharingan. I have my ways. I hope you'll come to your decision soon. Until then, I'm going to find a place to rest. Naruto heads out with his two guards and finds a hotel. The next day, Naruto enjoys the food of this village. But... While he was out on his own, he was ambushed. Shinobi attack him, but their attacks would phase right through him. His entire body was intangible, and with the swipe of his hand, they all had cuts all around their body. The Mizukage really sent her guards to attack me? What a pitiful test of my strength. Anyway, tell her to make her decision. She has to the end of the day. Naruto uses a body flicker and vanishes down to the boat as he would wait. The Mizukage herself comes down to the boat saying that it was a deal. Alright then, there's only one condition. What is that? I'm only going to sell these to your village, so do not sell them to another. I see. Well... It will make my village stronger, but that seems to only benefit my side. What would you like in return then? That serpent in the water. Mei's eyes widen, telling Naruto that he's crazy. I'm just kidding. I want the tail beast of this village. She's then angered and says that this isn't a fair deal, but Naruto says it is. He only wants the location and argues that if she doesn't tell him, it's not as if she could stop him from taking the tail beast of the village anyway. Mei gets into a fighting stance, but Naruto transforms into the Nine Tails. Just, how is this possible? Doesn't this beast reside in the village hidden in the leaves? This alone would force Mei to give up the location of the Jinchuriki, but she says she doesn't know if he'd still be there by the time that Naruto arrives. Naruto would call her a weakling for giving up the position of her ally, but he keeps the location in mind. It's not as if he wants to tell Beast now. He just wants to know the location of others, like himself. Once the supplies are loaded up on the ship, they depart from the land, heading back. They then return, and Naruto is approached by Ryo. Lord Naruto, I'm glad to see that you're back. Thank you, Ryo. Are you, well, are you finished with your work here? Yes, I am. But I need you to help with the supplies. After you're done with that, catch me up on things that are going on. Ryo nods, and Naruto returns to the center of the village. He sits on a building, watching the sunset as this is when Ryo would appear using the body flicker. Ah, there you are. So who was the one who planned the attack on the Leaf Village? A man named Orochimaru. 
I've done some deeper research, and he was one of the legendary Sanin. He is currently the head of the Sound Village, and he now has Sasuke Uchiha on his side. Sasuke Uchiha. I remember him. He used to be a part of the Leaf Village, did he not? I wonder what changed. Ryo, do you know where the Sound Village is located? I'd like to plan an attack against them. Yes, I do. Alright, well, let's begin planning. Many months pass on, and Naruto heads out, this time with Choji and Shino. They follow the route mapped out by Ino and the two Hyuga. They then get to the outside of the base where Naruto would smirk. Shino, take down the two guards. We watch as Shino takes out two bow and arrows, shooting them both at the same time, striking each guard in their chest. They fall to the ground and Naruto stands up. Let's head inside. They walk towards the entrance as the guards would then beg for their lives. Shino then tells them that there's no point. The insects that were shot into their bodies have already devoured their organs. They walk inside as this is when Jirobo breaks through one of the walls and attempts to strike down Naruto with the power of his curse mark. His fist was then caught by Choji who begins to gain a golden glow as well as his chakra lines becoming visible as well. Golden wings then burst from his back as he then opened his eyes as they were the same color. What are you? Your worst nightmare. Choji then punches Jirobo, sending him to the back of the base through many walls. Suigetsu and Karin, as well as Sasuke, then step through the wall, seeing what was going on. Naruto and Sasuke look at one another. Naruto? What are you doing here? I thought you were dead. As you can tell, I'm not. I came to figure out why you were wasting your time with the snake Sanin. He's promised me power. The power I need to defeat my elder brother. You seek power. That's all? I could have given you that strength in just half a year. What a bluff, Sasuke. Don't believe his words. They tell lies. There's no way this child has the strength that seeds a Sanin. Orochimaru walks from the shadows and stares down Naruto. Sasuke, how about we make a deal? If I can defeat him right here and now, you'll join my village instead. Sasuke looks at Orochimaru, but agrees with Naruto. It doesn't matter who trains me, just as long as I become stronger. The snake Sanin was shocked, and with one movement, his body was cut into several pieces by Naruto. No one in the room even saw him move. Naruto looked down at the head of the Sanin and crushed it below his feet. Alright, let's go. Sasuke looked at Naruto wondering just how he was able to move that fast. Choji, go pick up the big one. When he comes back with an unconscious Jirobo, the group would then be warped back to the area by Naruto's Mangekyo Sharingan. Sasuke would then step back, asking how he got these eyes. I killed a man who attacked my village and took them. This puts all doubts out of Sasuke's mind of Naruto's strength. They continue to walk in past the barriers as Choji and Shino would take them to the training facility as Naruto goes off to his office. He meets with Ryo and wonders what they should do next. There really isn't any threat to their lifestyle, so they just need to strengthen their village from the inside now. The Raito village puts most of their resources into their shinobi for the next seven months. Sasuke and Team Taka walk into Naruto's office asking for permission to then hunt down Itachi. Naruto asked if he was truly ready and Sasuke's eyes turned to that of the Mangekyo Sharingan. Well then, I'm shocked, but also proud. Go ahead, 
And once he's killed, bring his body back here. We don't want it falling into anyone's hands. Sasuke nods, heading off. And after only a couple days, he returns. The body is brought back to Naruto. But he's surprised to see that Itachi was still breathing. So, you had a change of heart. Why? The Leaf Village is the real threat. We must destroy what is left of them and kill Donzo. So, what do you want me to do with your brother? He's already on the door of death. Heal him. Naruto places a green tag on his chest and it glows. Itachi sits up. But not only that, he can't feel his illness anymore. Naruto then notices his robes. So you are a part of that group as well. Itachi would turn, wondering how Naruto knows about the Akatsuki. Naruto then opens a file in his desk and throws a mask to the lap of Itachi. He looks down and he's shocked. How could the masked man be killed by this child? Sasuke, I'll ask you this once. Would you like our nation to start a war with the Leaf Village and support you? Sasuke nods and Naruto smirks. Both of you, come with me. I've learned a lot about your clan, but there's no way I will allow you two to act in this war with the eyes that you have now. You'll end up going blind. Naruto has their eyes swapped as each brother now has the EMS. The Raito village then begins to prepare for war against the Leaf. As they alert the Miss Village of this, Mei is shocked, but she decides to stay out of a battle between nations. The Miss Village does keep up trade with the Raito Village though, since they are allies. A whole year would go by, and at this point, the Raito Nation was ready. Their shinobi head out in broad daylight and stand on a hill above the Leaf Village. Naruto transforms into the Ninetales and shoots a biju bomb down into the village. A large explosion occurs, sending shockwaves throughout the land. The Leaf Shinobi and Anbu are dispatched, but the Raito soldiers were already taking them down. Danzo himself had no idea how to respond, but before he could even leave his office, a giant fireball was seen heading right for it. Kakashi, who was still under his genjutsu, used the Kamui to then stop it. Naruto seeing this instantly appears right in front of him and absorbs him. Naruto's other eye would then turn into the other Kamui eye as now he has both of them. Well, who knew I'd find it here? Alright, I guess I could join the fun, but I think I'll give everyone else a chance first. Naruto sits down and watches the battles go on. A girl with pink hair notices him and jumps forward towards him. Instantly, Sakura was hit with multiple palm strikes that close her chakra points. She can't even see who was doing this to her, but her arm was then cut off by a blade. This is when she sees Hinata and Neji. We'll take care of her, Lord Naruto. Do as you please. Just don't die. I'd hate to have to use a bunch of seals on you two now, especially after all your training. They would nod. Hey, Ino, where's Sasuke and Itachi? Look towards the Hokage building. Naruto sits up from the building he was laying down and turns his head. He sees the two brothers completely demolishing Donzo. Well, that's over with. But there's no point to leave any survivors here. Naruto continues to walk throughout the village, as this is when a small boy tries to attack him. Naruto would dodge, and he sends him back. It's my job as a grandson of the third Hokage to protect this place. Naruto would then kick him into a building once he tries to hit him again, but the boy manages to get back up. I won't give up here. I can't lose now. Naruto turns to the kid and asks him if he wants to keep living. If you truly want to become a person that can live up to the legacy of Akage, join my village. 
I can never betray my home. It seems that you have too much loyalty, but that's also a strength. But it will be a weakness in this situation. Naruto lifts his hand and a wooden stake strikes through Konohamaru's chest. At the end of the day, the Leaf Village was completely in ruins. In this moment, another entity would try to attack the Raito Shinobi. A figure with orange hair floated above what was left. Instantly, Naruto appeared and stuck his arm through them. That attack you were charging. It's a little too slow. The other paths of pain would then try to attack, but even their weakest, well, even Naruto's weakest Raito Shinobi could take one of them down. Naruto then wonders where the real body was, but he doesn't care for it. The Raito Shinobi then return, with their job being complete. A celebration is held, as they would continue to party until morning would rise again. Ryo would walk over to Naruto, who was still laying on a rooftop. Lord Naruto, what's up, Ryo? Thank you. For what? For changing all of our lives. Don't thank me for that. But why? You could have given up on me at any point, but you didn't. So does I, who should be thanking all of you. But our journey, it's not yet complete. You're right. I still have a promise to uphold to all of you. So let's keep working together. The two of them, then fist bump with a smile. <laughs>